Let's take this. And we're asked, or we're told, um, to synthesize this from four carbons or less. Actually, let's just leave the methyls out. No need to make it extra work. So synthesize this from four carbons or less. In general, whenever you see a symmetric ketone, where everything on the left of the carbonyl is the same on the right, you are going to be using what we just did. First, going backwards, a decarboxylation, and then a clase in condensation. So let's look at this. If I'm going backwards and I'm saying I'm going to decarboxylate, well, we know decarboxylation involves heat. <coughs> and now, remember, decarboxylation removes a carbon, which means the carbon that, going from this to this, this has one more carbon than I had here. If I say that, like, I, if I number like before, I said that carbon, uh, I think I had, this is three. No, I had the carboxylic acid is three. So the carbonyl is one and the alpha carbon is two. Carbon three just got completely chopped off, which means going backwards, I have to draw in carbon three. I have to add it. So going backwards, I'm adding carbons, which is usually counterproductive. We want to remove carbons, right? But in this case, it's necessary because now we have the product of almost a clasin reaction, right? Because this is an ester, and we know clasin reactions end with a ketone and an ester. We're at a carboxylic acid. But we saw before the other two steps of this reaction. Step one, OH minus. Step two, H plus. And going backwards, that will convert the carboxylic acid back into its ester form. Now, I know it's going to be an OR, but what should that R group be? It depends on the question. If it's just a general synthesis and they tell you synthesize it from whatever, then you get to choose the R group. But sometimes in a question, you'll see a couple arrows later, it says OCH3 minus over the arrow, or OET minus over the arrow, or they actually give you the starting ester. In that case, you go with whatever OR group they give to you in the problem. But in this case, I didn't do anything, so I'm gonna keep it simple. I'm just gonna say it's an OCH3, because why add more than one carbon if I can avoid it? And now we have to go backwards. We have to figure out what did this look like before the Claisen condensation, right? Because the next step should be step one, OCH3 minus, remembering that the base should always match the OR group, and step two, H3O positive. <coughs> well, here's how you do it. Once again, do that numbering setup. Let's say the carbonyl is one, the alpha carbon is two, and the ester is three. We know that before we did a clasin, we always have two esters. Well, I still have one ester that's exactly, un that is completely untouched but carbon one is not an ester. What you have to do is the bond between one and two. Let's start by just redrawing this right here. So redraw your, your product. The bond between one and two is the bond that you formed. How do I know that? Because three was untouched, which means it was not the one that attacked. The carbonyl that gets attacked is the one that kicks its OR group out, and this is missing its OR group, which means I know that the bond between one and two is the one that was made, which means going backwards, all I have to do is erase that bond between one and two and draw in the OR group, the OCH3 in this case. And this would be the two esters that came together to do my clasin, to give me this, right? Because OCH3 minus would deprotonate one of these two alphas, let's say it's this one, and then that alpha would attack there, swing up, swing down, and kick your OCH3 group out. And now it's just a matter of synthesizing this. <coughs> so one thing I'd like to stress for exam two is always try to make things into carboxylic acids because they're what you can work with most easily. So we have a reaction. We need to turn something that has two separate esters And I want to convert those esters going forward into, or sorry, I want to convert those going backwards into carboxylic acids. I want to turn this into an OH. Or technically going forward, I want to turn the OH into an OCH3. The way you do that is just use some HOCH3 
and H plus. What that would do is it would protonate the oxygen of the double bonds, make those want to swing up, and so this oxygen could attack here. When the oxygen swings back down, the OH gets kicked out instead of, instead of the OCH3. So it's kind of the same idea as this. Uh, whatever you want to replace your OR group with, whether it's OH or OR, have that over the arrow. I want to turn this OH into an OCH3, so I put that over the arrow. <clears throat> and now I have two separate carboxylic acids, and from there it's a matter of do I, I can convert these into OHs and start cutting, or I can use a protecting group. Now, in past questions, it wasn't actually synthesized this from four carbons or less, it was synthesized these from a diol that looked like this. I think this is what you had in your workshop recently. And well, we know a reaction that turns this diol into two separate carboxylic acids. We need a strong oxidizing agent, which means we need to use Jones reagent, or the H2CRO4 reaction, right? As far as if I wanted to cut this, well, I'd probably have to put a protecting group on one of these carbonyls, because I don't want it to be in the way when I cut the other one. So, let's see. What would I want to do here? Well, there's only one way to make carboxylic acids that let us, that we care about, and that's still Jones reagent. But I'm going to be a little clever about how I use that Jones reagent, because I don't have to oxidize everything. For example, Let's draw out the carbon skeleton first. If I make this a C double bond O, and I make this an OH, reacting that with Jones would oxidize both of these to the carboxylic acid. If I have both of these being OHs, they would still get both oxidized to the carboxylic acid, which means I'm free to choose what goes here. I could even have one of those carboxylic acids already being there, because <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> because a carboxylic acid that's reacting with Jones just remains a carboxylic acid, so no change, although I did accidentally lose a carbon doing that. So what I mean is this. If I reacted this with Jones, I would still just get a carboxylic acid here, and this would remain untouched, but it would still be a carboxylic acid at the end. So you're, you're allowed to choose what you go backwards to, because going backwards, there are a bunch of things that end up with the same result. Okay. My thought process is, I need at least one OH so I can cut things apart. So I'm going to turn at least one of these carboxylic acids back into an OH. The other thing is, I want to make sure that whatever the other one is can't react. And so I need to protect it. And the only thing we know that can be protected, well, we know two things if we go back to Orgo 1, but let's stick to Orgo 2 concepts. We know that our main thing that we can protect is an aldehyde or a ketone using the diol protecting group. So I turn this carboxylic acid into an OH so I can cut with it. And I turn this carboxylic acid into an aldehyde so I can protect it so it doesn't get in the way of me cutting with this. Okay? So now I want to put that protecting group on. And I'm going backwards, right? I'm going from something with the protecting group to something without, which means I remove the protecting group going forward. Remove the protecting group by using H3O positive. And so I want to protect this carbonyl, so let's number these so I don't lose track of them. Six carbons all together, and carbon one will have orgo beast on it now. One, two, three, four, five, six, oh, wait. One, two, three. Four, five, and six. Okay. <clears throat> now, I want to cut using that OH. And there are two main methods we have of cutting. Let's start with the one we've been using since the first exam. Okay? So, you find your OH, label that carbon, label that carbon A. Now, look a single bond away and label any carbon that's a single bond away B. In this case, there's only one carbon five, B. You're going to be cutting the bond between A and B. Okay. All right, so I'm redrawing everything the same for now. And I said that this is A and this is B. 
and I said I'm cutting the bond between A and B apart. So I'm going to erase that bond. Now, this reaction is called an alkyl lithium. So something needs a lithium, and something needs a carbonyl. <clears throat> well, a carbonyl is a C double bond O. Obviously, the carbon that has the oxygen should be where that C double bond O is. So that carbon that is labeled A, draw a double bond to the oxygen it is attached to, and erase the hydrogen. That's your carbonyl. And I'm going to redraw that over the arrow because it's four carbons or less. So that was carbon six by my numbering. And carbon six had two hydrogens on it. I'm just going to draw them out, but you don't have to. Okay, so that's carbon six. And these reactions are always two steps. Step one, the carbonyl. Step two, the H plus. I'm going to use H2O. Okay? The other piece that we needed to put uh, take care of is B. What made B want to attack that carbonyl? Well, we said it in the name, lithium. So put a lithium on B. Okay? So now we've cut one carbon off, and we still have a couple more to go. And let's number these one more time. Six, five, or sorry. One, two, three, four, and five. So I'm still five carbons plus the carbons of the protecting group. I need to cut again. <clears throat> now, you can't cut when you're starting from a lithium, so we need to turn that lithium into something. And there's only one reaction we know that ends with a lithium, and that's lithium over the arrow. All that does is replace a bromine with that lithium. So, on carbon five, that lithium is now a bromine. Okay? And now we have a reaction that turns a bromine into an OH, which then we can cut with. Well, actually we have two. We have HBr. HBr will turn an OH into a bromine going forward, and so will PBr3. My personal preference is to PBr3 as long as you're not a tertiary bromine, so I'm going to use PBr3 here. Only because the HBr mechanism has a carbocation intermediate, and we learned last semester that primary carbocations aren't that great. So I'm going to avoid using it. As far as you're concerned, will that matter? Probably not. So now I'm back to an OH, and I can cut again. So let's number these one more time. Six, five, four, three, two. Now here's the other way you can cut from an OH. The alkyl lithium reaction can only cut a single bond away between A and B. But you have another option, your epoxide reaction. Label the carbon with your OH A, the next carbon over B, and a third carbon over C. And you can have multiple Bs and Cs as long as they're connected to carbon A. The point being though, epoxides allow you to cut the bond between B and C, while alkyl lithiums only allow a cut between A and B. Okay? So now how do I do that? So first of all, we know what an epoxide looks like. It's a carbon, it's an oxygen in a three-membered ring with two other carbons. And we know at least one of those carbons has to be A because that was the carbon with the OH. The carbon B will be the other carbon because it's attached to carbon two, or carbon A, okay? So if I'm numbering it, if I'm gonna number it based on what I had here, that would be two and that would be three. Now what is the thing that attacks this epoxide? Well, Everything else is the same. Protected groups don't do attacks. And I cut the bond between four and three, so four should still be over here. So I have six, five, and four, and I broke the bond between four and three. Well, the carbon that I labeled C is the carbon where, just like in this case, if it wasn't part of the oxygen structure, gets a lithium. So carbons A and B go in your epoxide, carbon C gets a lithium attached. And that's how you can cut with an epoxide because epoxides are a faster way of cutting because they chop two carbons off at once. And just like the alkyl lithium, we have two separate steps. Step one, the epoxide. Step two, just a proton source. So I'll say H2O. Now we're almost done. We have to remove our protecting group because right now we have one, two, three, four, five, right? So can I remove my protecting group right now? No. I can't, and this is a very important point to make. I kind of erased it, but we said before, what does lithium react with? Lithium loves to react with C double bond O. That's how we split this apart in that step I just erased. 
the lithium makes a carbon negative that attacks the carbonyl. If I remove my protecting group in this next step and I go back to the double bond note here, well, there's that lithium's favorite thing, and it will almost instantly form a ring on itself. We don't want that to happen. So you absolutely, absolutely have to get rid of that lithium before you remove your protecting group. And how do you get rid of the lithium? The same way we did it before. With lithium over the arrow, converting it into a bromine. Bromine isn't like lithium. It doesn't make carbon super duper reactive with carbonyls, which means now I'm free to remove my, protect, remove my protecting group and there won't be any further issue. So now, again, pay attention to the direction of your arrow. I'm going to end with the protecting group, which means I'm putting the protecting group on in this step, which means over my arrow, I need my diol and my H plus. And what reacts with that? A ketone or an aldehyde. And now I am four carbons or less. There's carbons six, five, four, three, and two got added with the epoxide, and carbon one got added in this step that I erased. And that's the general gist of the synthesis. So what do I want you to take away from this? Two key, uh, several key points. One, you can make a symmetric ketone by doing a Claisen condensation followed by a decarboxylation reaction. So whenever you see a, a symmetric ketone in a synthesis problem, that is probably what they are intending you to do. Secondly, <clears throat> you have two main ways of cutting carbons apart. Either the carbonyl reacting with a lithium, in which you can, case you can cut one bond apart between A and B, or with the epoxides, where you cut two bonds apart between B and C. Personally, I prefer epoxides just because they're faster, but that doesn't mean the other method is any worse. It just takes a couple extra steps, but if you're pressed for time, the epoxide's definitely the more efficient way to do it on an exam. Finally, and perhaps most importantly, is never remove your protecting group until lithium is out of your structure, because the second the lithium sees that C double bond O, it's gonna react with it. So make sure that lithium is gone. And that's the gist of the synthesis problem.